There's a new term that's been floating around in the AI space, and that's context engineering. And unlike some other trends that I'm going to talk about, this one actually makes sense. But I have some frustrations with this newly coined term that I'm going to explain. And at the same time, I also really like it, and you probably do as well. I know that doesn't make any sense, but I'll explain. And I want to go over a really good example that Cole Medin, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right, please correct me if I'm not. He has a great example in his GitHub that I will link down below for you as well on Claude Code. And then I'm going to show you what context engineering means for an AI agent. So I'm going to start off saying the first issue that I have with this newly coined term, and then and it was by accident, which I'll show you why I said that in a second, is that we've already been doing the con this context engineering. This isn't really a new concept. It's maybe a newly coined term, which I've been saying, but the concept of context, context engineering is not new. You, if you've been using RAG for semantic search to give some more information to your agents, you've already been doing some form of context engineering. If you have files that you're retrieving some information from to give them, if you have tools that you want specific agents to use, if you've been using an orchestration agent to then create more subtasks, and then they do those specific things so that you can shorten the context window for each of those agents, then you've done context engineering. This is not a new term. It's just now it's been officially coined a term. So it seems like it's new. Now, if you remember about five months ago in a dark time in AI history, there was a new from Andre Karpathy himself. He just was over the weekend coding and he termed it vibe coding. Well, in this tweet right here, this was actually February 2nd of this year. There's a new kind of coding I call vibe coding where you fully give into the vibes, everything that you just kind of forget the code exists because you just tell it to do whatever it is. Okay. Now that's great. I, I don't want to bash too much on vibe coding because I do it for like personal projects. And if it, depending on how small the task is, I kind of do vibe coding, but also not really. And this leads me to the same man himself, Andre Karpathy. He, he, he uh, tweeted this, this was June 25th. He gave plus one for context engineering over prompt engineering. All right, so people associate prompts with short task descriptions you'd give an LLM in your day-to-day -day use. When in every industrial strength LLM app, context engineering is delicate art and science of filling the context window with the just the right information for the next step. And he kind of goes on about this, right? And and that, that makes sense. And then the first, the first reply from Phil here, Phil, context engineering is the new vibe coding. Now to Andre's, you know, to, to what he said, he said he's not trying to coin a new term or something. It's just the, the thing of prompt engineering isn't exactly what he expected it to be or what, what he means by, by this context engineering. So you prompt an LLM to tell you why the sky is blue, but apps build context meticulously for LLMs to solve their custom tasks. Well, just a couple of days prior, Langchain actually brought out this uh, blog post called the rise of context engineering. All right. So what, let's go over what, what they describe context engineering is. So this is building dynamic systems to provide the right information and tools in the right format such that the LLM can plausibly accomplish the task. Context engineering is a system. Complex agents likely get context from many sources. Context can come from developer of the application, user, previous interactions, tool calls, or other external data. Pulling these all together involves a complex system. So there's all these things here that we can use as context engineering or as the context for our system, right? So you have the, the, the basic instructions and system prompt that you know, you're used to. Now, long-term memory, this means that memory, this is memory that persists after the session is over so that you can use it before other sessions in the future as well. So it takes, uh, takes information from all the sessions and then that can be used across all other sessions as well. And then you have state or history. This is short-term memory. So for instance, crew AI flows has state in their flows. That means that for while that flow is running, that you can save state and the flow, and you can use that part with amongst other crews, just other actually pieces of information being used in other Python executions, but it, that's just short-term memory for that session. You know, there's rag, you know, this, this is what I mean. We've been using this, right? I mean, everybody, use, not everybody, but a lot of people use rag. And that means that we're retrieving, we're semantically retrieving information from a vector database to give to our agent or our system, whatever that may be, so that it can perform the task better, right? That is not new, right? And then the user prompt, yes. And then also available tools. Now that's not new either. We've given tools to our agents or our systems before, you know, now we have MCP servers to give all these tools, make it even easier to integrate into an agent so they can select from the tools given you have a decent prompt so that it knows when and what tool to use. But you know, that 
using that tool, you can do searching online. So you can have, you know, Tavili, Excel, Firecrawl, you know, they can go online search to give you, even bring down more context based on whatever that task is. And then you have structured output, which I, I literally, I don't think I haven't used a non-structured output from an agent in months. And I always use Pydantic. I know you can use JSON. I just don't like JSON for the reliability. If I use a Pydantic model for structured output, I mean, it just works every time. Now, why is this important? Okay. When a system, an agentic system messes up, it's largely because the LLM makes a mistake. Well, thinking from the, these principles that we have just talked about, there's, they're, they're saying, lane change is basically in two reasons. The underlying model just messed up. It's not good enough. The model itself isn't good enough, or the model was not past the appropriate context to make good output. And they're making a statement that a bold statement that probably more often than not, model mistakes are caused by the second reason, which would be us as the user. We're not passing in or we're not giving enough context to that agent or system to be able to give us the appropriate task. Or given a bigger context window, maybe we're giving too much information and maybe it's like hallucinating. We'll get to that in a minute. And I think there's a an important question that you're maybe asking is how is context engineering different from prompt engineering? And that's a great question. So why the shift? Why, why are we now talking about context instead of prompting, right? So, and, and you've, I mean, how, how many like guides or courses I've seen on prompt engineering and essentially it's just, you're just trying to inject great sentences and phrases and steps uh, to an agent, right? So it's like you're kind of heavy loading all on that prompt to help the task give you, give you the correct output of some task. So early on, developers are focused on phrasing prompts cleverly to coax better answers. Now, as the applications grew more and more, it's becoming clear that providing complete and structured context is you know more important than just trying to come up with the exact correct phrasing that you need. They are going to also argue that prompt engineering is a subset of context engineering. Even if you have all the context, how you assemble it in the prompt still absolutely matters. The difference is that you are not you're not architecting your prompt to work well with a single set of input data, but rather to take a set of dynamic data and format it properly. And I think that's actually a really good point. You know, prompt it doesn't mean that prompt engineering is being replaced by context engineering because now that we have all these sources coming to help uh, help an agent perform a specific task, you know, within that context window, that doesn't mean that the prompt used that the prompt that you need to use that information that still needs to be good, right? You can't just you don't want to just give it some basic thing, right? If, I think from my point of view as an engineer is that I want to make I wouldn't just give something basic and expect it to handle a bunch of data. Like I wouldn't actually want to, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. So I still would need to give proper prompts so that the model knows how to use all the information that I'm giving it. And I want to go over like one more thing from another blog. So this is from Lance Barton, who is a part of Langchain. Again, they just released a couple different actually blogs from Langchain um, on the 23rd. So he wants to talk about context specifically for age, context engineering for agents. And I think this is kind of an important, important concept is context engineering is the delicate art and science of filling the context window with just the right information for the next step. So you have the context window, you just want to give it basically what we said, instructions, knowledge, and tools. You know, this is not something new. I know I've said this enough, but when we coin new terms like this, it's not a new concept. We've just given it an actual name. The concept is not new. This is not new. We, you have been doing this. You have been doing this. Now, maybe we can do it better. Okay, that's. I think that's a fair statement is that we can all do it better but we've been doing this now, like I just mentioned context hallucination, like, you know, just a couple minutes ago. Uh, so in, in here, he talks about this. So he says, however, long running tasks and accumulating feedback from tool calls means that agents often utilize a large number of tokens. This can cause some problems. Okay. And so somebody else drew Bruning, uh, outlined a number of specific ways that longer context can actually cause performance problems. So you can have context poisoning when a hallucination makes it into the context context distraction. This is when the context overwhelms the training context confusion, when superfluous context influences the response and context clash when parts of the context disagree. So that's when Anthropic, you know, they came out uh, with what they also came out with some information, but they said agents often engage in conversations spanning hundreds of turns. This means that requiring careful context management strategies are basically needed. So now talking about an AI agent, 
this is how he came up with examples for how you would do this. So as far as write context goes, this would mean that you want to persist information between sessions. So you have long-term memories. This is across agent sessions. Like I said, like this when you're actually saving outside of the session. So like some database, then we have scratch pad. So this is within the agent session and also state. And I mentioned state a lot. You can use state kind of anywhere. So saving within the session of um, your agents working. And then you have select context. Now, what this means is that you're basically going to retrieve information from when, whenever you wrote context, now you want to retrieve that information for use of the agent. So this means you can retrieve the relevant tools for that agent to perform that task. You can retrieve from your scratch pad, your, you know, your state, your long-term memory, or just generally any other relevant information needed to help give context to that agent to perform better. Then on the third step, compress context. This was kind of the problem with the context window, right? Now, th those can add up, right? If you give a lot of information, your tokens can easily add up and then it kind of becomes a management part. So how can you manage, manage that? Well, you can all, you can summarize some of the context or some of the parts of the context for the agent to just retain the relevant tokens needed. Or you can also trim context to remove irrelevant tokens. So this can help bring the context window down so you don't have some of those um, information disagreeances that we had just talked about. And then as far as isolate context, I think that this is maybe something that is not used enough or you know I, I maybe i'm kind of being arrogant saying this is that i have not seen many people talk about isolating context enough and what this means is that you can spread the tasks that you need that need to be done like if you have a long prompt for a task that needs to be done and you're retrieving all this information well why not split that up into subtask for the agent to use and then whenever you do that you're just going to give specific context just for it to complete that part of the task. So now you have a smaller context window for that, uh, for that task, which means that you are more than likely probably going to get a better, uh, a better output for the task. And you're not going to have any like hallucinations or anything like that, that we had just talked about either. This is really going to help out your agent perform better. And Anthropic's multi-agent researcher, which I'm going to go over, makes a case for this. They, they have many agents with isolated context they, well, they're saying that that outperformed a single agent largely because the sub agent's context window can be allocated to a more narrow subtask. Sub agents operate in parallel with their own context windows, exploring different aspects of the question simultaneously. Now, again, the problem with that is you can have a total of more tokens being used across you are, you are, comp you, you're having less tokens for that agent, but in total you can have more tokens. All right, now, now I mentioned before that we're gonna go over, I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna call him Cole, I'm not, I don't wanna pronounce his last name incorrectly. So I wanna go over Cole's GitHub, which I will have a link to, you know, I mean, this is a great, he actually has a great video that I watched also, it's a great video. I'll also link that so you can watch it if you want. Uh, but this is this is basically giving you a template so that whenever you go with Claude, Claude code, which is already using agents, this is gonna help give the Claude code agents better information for whatever task it is that you want to do. So just to briefly go over this, he has, I mean, this works like it's great documentation to get it working. Basically, you're just going to clone this. You're going to set up the project rules. He has some, he has some examples for you. You're going to add examples. You're going to create your initial feature requests. So this initial markdown file, and then you're going to basically create a comprehensive product requirements prompt. Now he has, and then you're going to have two Claude commands, one to generate that, uh, that prompt for you and then another one to actually execute it. And so that your task is gonna have, your task is gonna have all this extra context to then have the agents that are, you know, performed behind the, behind the scene with cloud code that they are going to be able to, uh, like give you whatever, give you the output of the task much. They're going to be more accurate and it's going to give you a better solution to that task. Again, I highly recommend doing this. I'll have a link for this in the description. And just one more thing that I want to go over is, you know, Anthropic came out, they gave a blog post on how they built their uh, multi-agent research system. So let's go over this really quick. So this is like, this is just a high level, this is a high level image that they provide on their blog. So what they want to ask are, what are all the companies in the United States working on AI agents in 2025? Make a list of at least 100 for each include all this information. Okay. So that's the user request going into this multi-agent research system. So what's, what's happening here? So we had this lead agent, right? This is an orchestrator agent. You know, though this, this basically means that this agent doesn't necessarily specifically complete a task. It's going to delegate to other tasks for agents to execute, but it's going to plan it, give, it should give you the tools necessary to each of those agents, um, information 
that you can use, so, you know, memory and anything else as context just for those agents so they can complete that as best as possible. So here we have a lead agent. You have these different search sub agents. Okay. So the sub agents are going to be spawned from this lead agent so that they can complete these tasks because this lead agent is going to be creating those tasks. And that's what we talked about context, you know, context window management, one of the ways, well, actually not one. And that's why I just talked about isolating context is that you can create sub many subtasks from the orchestrator agent. So it has a better chance of giving you really what you want, right? We don't want to just give it some, a single prompt and then expect it to do that and not really care about the context that we're giving it. We want to give all those things, right? There's no reason not to, like you want it to really perform and give you the output that you want. And then, you know, they have, so that's why they have this memory over here because it can be used to retrieve information for those subtasks. So that it knows what it needs just for that. And they also have a, a citation sub agent, you know, for citations of where they got information from for that particular section or summary. So now back to the original thing where I said I have some problems with it and there's a lot of things that I like. So let me answer that. Well, like I said, the first problem is that we've been using this. I don't like when a new term comes up, but people have already been doing it. But then it's also, it seems like it's a new frontier of the AI space and it's not. Right. I understand. And, you know, Andre himself didn't even really want to, wasn't trying to, although him being him, when he says things like that, I feel like at some level, he's got to know that people are probably going to run with that. Just like he did with vibe coding. He probably didn't know the vibe coding as much, but this one, he probably had to have known at some level, but, uh, so that's why I don't like about it. And also this doesn't mean that you just now have to right? this just only means that we can maybe do it better. There's different, different ways to have context, um, you know, imported into our agents or, you know, injected into our agents, not imported, injected into our agents. And one of those ways is to have different subtasks and have that orchestrator agent that Anthropy gave us an example of. I think that is a great example of doing that. Now, some things I really like about this is that we've already been doing it. <laughs> uh, it's kind of, I know I just said, I don't like it for that reason, but I also like it for that reason, because that means that you've been doing something well, right? Now I know when you're talking like ChatGPT, it has its own memory system. It has had its own memory system. So you've, if you use ChatGPT, you kind of already have that a to some extent. And then whenever you create AI agents, you know, what well, AI has long-term, short-term context, um, they, it's not just, con they have other, some other memories. I, I'm sorry. I, just, I can't think of the top of my head. But they have like five different memories now. Oh, entity memory is another one. They have like five different memories now that you can use in each of those kind of do something different, right? You have mem zero, which helps you identify the personality and traits of the person that's in that chat. So that later on, whenever you need to search for something or you want to respond, then it has like, it has information about that person or the entity. Uh, so that we can respond this more tailored to them. And that's where the memory comes in because it stores that information across sections, across sessions, which would be the long-term memory part. And another thing I like about this is if you really want to build like a production grade app that you want to sell, I, I highly recommend doing performing context engineering. So if you have somebody that wants to, you know, you have an automation flow, but at some point, you know, you want to use AI, you should use AI because maybe they want to summarize some context from all this information. They want to generate emails. You know, you don't want to just have this prompt that says, oh, I want it done this way, blah, blah, blah. You probably want to have examples of what they've done before. You may want to have examples of what they don't like. You may want to have bring in some context of things that absolutely cannot be a part of the email, you know, and those sort of things, right? You're just bringing context in so that the model can perform better, right? Not saying it has to be a single shot every time, but you want them to perform better. And the way to do that is bringing in context. Now I've talked a lot in this video. This is probably one of the, one of the videos that I've just talked a lot and I haven't really actually coded anything, but I, I just, as much as I kind of pooped on context engineering as being a new term, even though it's not a new concept, you know, this is helpful in bringing out that, you know, nothing against prompt engineering because we still need it, but context engineering, I just think that, you know, we've, we've been doing it and it just now what we can focus on is doing that better, right? We can f focus on doing that better for the future. Again, I have a link for everything in the description below. Now, recently I have been creating some AI agents for high profile people in within other do school communities that are doing very well. And what that means is, you know, I'm hosting it. I, I'm doing all the metrics for it. I am creating it. And it's basically you, we go over what you want and I do the rest for you. 
obviously we'll talk about the price. But if you are interested in that, you know, join my school community. And also if you just want to learn anything about AI agents, join as well. I have a few courses coming out. The the newest one will be Firecrawl. So look out for that in, in a week or so. That will be out that I think is going to be a great course for you to understand web searching. And Firecrawl has done some amazing things in just the last few months. Thank you for watching. As, as I said, everything will be in the description below. And here are some more videos for you to watch in the meantime. I will see you next video.